assuming the U.S. is going to play in a 4-3-3. Yes, okay. Then most people seem to be picking six midfield players, a starter and a backup at each spot. Keep in mind, as we discussed when we did our strikers and wingers, there are players like Gio Reyna and Brendan Aronson who might nominally go as wingers, but who can play in the midfield as well. But I think most people expect the starters to be Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, and Yunus Musa. Uh, and then I've seen players like Acosta, Luca De La Torre, uh, most people are pretty confident they're going to be there as backups. I think Malik Tillman has a great chance to be in there as well uh, as that other backup eight, if you will. Um, so I would start there and, and go from there. Okay, so yes, I, I, I have yet to meet... Well, that's not, that's not true, but there are very few people that don't have Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, and Eunice Musa, including Greg Berhalter, I think. And look, Best laid plans, we all understand that, and knock on wood that everybody is healthy. As we know, uh, even Eunice Musa missed the last window because of some injuries. Tyler Adams has had a, a history of, uh, of injuries. Even Weston McKinney this year has uh, been out for extended periods because of injuries. They are all back. They are all playing. Uh, and knock on wood, they are all healthy. And if that is the case, that is a formidable type of three, and I think they've developed a really good uh, connection and understanding about the roles specific to the way that Greg Berhalter wants them to play. Tyler Adams is, you know, a, he's not a reluctant leader, but he's just much more kind of reserved and mature beyond his years when he talks about the game and when you talk to him about the game. Um, I think that he may, if he's healthy, he may end up being one of those un unsung heroes of the sport. He's not flashy, but I think that Greg Berhalter recognizes that there is a consistency of play and more importantly, an understanding of exactly what the role is in terms of cleaning up in that in that middle three right there. Uh, anything on Tyler Adams? No, I agree. And, and, and by the way, the Geo and Aronson scenario kicks in if they do play that double pivot with Adams and Musa and have more of a 10 and then you could see Gio or Aronson play that role, which I guess would mean dropping Wesson McKinney. Uh, but, you know, something to think when about. When it comes to dropping one of those three, the ones that I have heard the most um, have been Yunus Musa. Even though I agree with my good friend Stu Holden in that he, for now, the last year, has targeted Musa as the breakout player and as has to be on the field. And yet when you start trying fit to fit in some of these players, um, when it comes down to it, People will say it's Musa that has to come out uh, relative to replacing one of those three, as opposed to Tyler Adams or uh, or Weston McKinney. Weston McKinney, uh, I love him, but at times I'm sure he can be frustrating to play with on the field and to put in as a coach because, you know, at times he freeforms it, and that can produce some wonderful results, but. I think as he's grown and matured, he's kind of more picking and choosing his moments. And I think that's a good thing. I just think it's a form of, you know, I think it's come from playing in Serie A in particular for Juventus, where his energy and his explosiveness and his coming late out of the midfield, he gets to pick and choose his moments when he, uh, when he does that. And I think it can be incredibly valuable. Although, if it doesn't work, he can get caught out of position, and that's where you're going to need the help of the Tyler Adams and uh, and Eunice Musa. If some of those players are hurt, we mentioned already, you know, Kellen Acosta at times has played and played very well under Greg Berhalter. And the interesting thing is I talk so much about set pieces, right? This particular team, as great as it is and has evolved as it is, I don't think they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. I just think that they're not particularly good on set pieces. They they should be better at, on and and set pieces should be a much a much more lethal tool that we have. And it's not for lack of height. We have plenty of players that are good in the air. Whether it's you know a a Walker Zimmerman uh, or an Aaron Long or just being really good in the air, whether you're tall or not, like a Weston Weston McKinney. I do think that at times using Christian Pulisic as your free tick kick taker has not been good. I mean, while Christian Pulisic is very good at a lot of things, I don't think he has a consistency. Kellen Acosta, even though I don't think he's going to start, actually is much better in terms of the ball that he serves in. And so in a, in a strange world, and I don't want anybody to get hurt, but who knows? At some point, Kellen Acosta might get on the field 
And if for nothing, nothing else, his service, if he's allowed to take it, might be the difference between scoring a goal, not scoring a goal, and even uh, winning a goal. So I do think that Kellen Acosta is going to uh, going to be there. We talked about Paul Oriola and the way that he can play multiple multiple uh, positions. I think Luca Della Torre has done enough to be on that plane, even though he's not playing a lot for Celta Vigo right now. Um, he still, I think, has shown in that Greg uh, Berhalter system that he can come in and provide a, to your point, a, ver- a different look. Because some of these guys come, come in and, and it changes, even though it's three, it changes the way they play. So you've identified five guys, obviously the three starters, McKinney, Musa, Adams, and then um, Acosta and De La Torre that you think are yes. pretty much locks. So if we were to squeeze in a sixth midfielder, I'm giving it to Malik Tillman. Uh, do you see somebody else, a Mihailovic or somebody that could sneak in there? I'd give it to Jordi Mihalovic, but I think it's going to be Malik Tillman. I think that Greg Berhalter has a a fondness for him, and I and I do too. I think he I think he can be a good player. Um, yeah, but I, Jordi Mihalovic, the timing is everything, Mossy, and just his timing is not great. He was hurt earlier in the year when it was supposed to be his kind of coming out party. You know, again, I thought he was great for Montreal down the stretch and showed even in the playoffs that you know why he has gotten a move to to Europe and i just think for me if you know people ask me who's going to be your biggest surprise it could be one of those where on that november 9th day when greg berhalter is reading it out you hear jordy mahalovich because he had come into camp or whatever or done enough where just take a flyer on him uh, anybody else? Uh, I, I know we've got a list here. Johnny Cardoso's on there. Um, I don't think Johnny's done enough. No, yeah. and I don't think he's he's made enough of an, a positive impact, not just to us on the outside watching, but on the inside to the coaching staff to say that that's that's going to fly. So, bottom line: Adams, Musa, McKinney, Acosta, De La Torre, and then either Tillman or Mihailovic. That's how you would. Yeah. That's the that's the way that I look at it, and, you know, because I put Paul Oriola and like a Christian Rule Don, at, at much more of a, a winger type of thing. Because I do think that Christian Rule Don is, is going to find a way to be there. I just think he is so liked that that Greg Berhalter is going to find a way to be there. I'm going to run out of spots real quick here. <laughs> <laughs> you like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.